Okay, so today I'm going to go over sprint number 29 from the test 12226. So the question reads, Carlos wants to color the six squares that make up the rectangle below so that each square is completely one color. Carlos plans to use exactly four different colors to color the squares, but he also wants exactly four of the squares to share a side with a square that has the same color. How many different ways can Carlos color the six squares? Okay, so I think the first thing um, we should do when we approach a question like this is to find a coloring that works and see like what kind of properties and rules it has, all right? Um, so let's read the rules. So we need to use exactly four different colors. So that means we can't use less than four, we can't use three, we have to use four. Um, and then we want four of the squares to share a side with the square that has the same color. So that's like a fancy way of saying um, we want four of the squares to be neighboring another square of the same color. And I'll show you what that looks like in the future. Um, so let's just choose four colors here. I'm going to be working with this blue color um, with green, and then we'll have yellow and then red at the end. So these will be the four colors that we're working with. And then um, first, let me just show you like what a valid coloring would look like. So we want a lot of colors to share neighbors. We want four of the um, boxes to share neighbors of the same color. So these will be the four boxes, uh, the four squares, such that their neighbors um, share the same color. And then the, we need to use all four colors, remember? So the last two boxes, I will just use the remaining two colors. Okay? And then um, it actually turns out that basically all the colorings look like this. So we have two pairs of colors that are connected. And then we have two more squares. So uh, let me just label them. We have two of these pairs of colors that are connected together. And then we have these two singletons to make sure we have four colors. And it turns out this is actually the only way we can do this to have two pairs and two singles. Um, this is the only way to satisfy both conditions because um, we can, I think it's best if you mess around a little bit and figure out why. But um, here's just like, so like you might be thinking, oh, what if we have like four colors, uh, like four of the same colors in a group? So we have, we have four squares that share a color with their neighbor. So that looks great. But then we need to use, we need to use all four colors, right? So we still need to use three colors and there's only two boxes, uh, two box, eh, two squares left. So like clearly that's not gonna work out. And you can try other methods, but like none of them will work. It turns out this is the only way that you can satisfy the condition. So, um, now, we, now that we know what to count, this question becomes a lot easier. So we want to count how many ways we can color um, these six boxes into two groups of two and two groups of one. And remember, the groups of two have to be connected. So like, it can, we can have like a group here and a group here and then two singles here. That would be a valid configuration, okay? So what we can do is we can first count how many ways to configure the two long groups like the two groups of two and then the um and then the two single ones we can just fill in later and there's multiple ways to do this but we want to make sure we're organized okay because there's going to be a lot of cases and we don't want to miscount and if we miscount it's very likely that we're going to get one of the wrong answers because that's how the question was designed so um, what I think is the easiest way is we want to count by how many vertical ones, like vertical groups, and how many horizontal groups there are. So let's start with case one. Um, so our first case is we have two vertical groups. Okay. So what that would look like is like we have a group like this and a group like this. And um, just to be clear, when I say groups, I mean like they're the same color. So like, 
a valid coloring like the two the, the two groups would be the same color and then the singletons would just be their each their own color okay so we want to figure out how many ways to configure the groups because after we figure out how to configure the groups we can just multiply that number um by 24 because that's the number of ways you can permute um all the colors or 24 is the number of ways you can assign four colors to four different groups okay anyways so let's get back to um counting the cases so if we have two vertical notice that there's three ways to assign them because we could just choose the free column, right? So like if we choose this column to be free, then these two will have the two vertical. And same thing if we choose these two columns. So there's three ways for this case. And then we have um, case two, which is um, one vertical, And then we have one horizontal as well. Okay, so what this case might look like is uh, something like this. Okay. Um, so notice that our um, vertical one can only be on the very left or the very right. Because if it was in the middle, we would have no way to fit the horizontal one, okay? So we have two choices for our vertical one. But after we put the vertical one, notice that we also have two choices for the horizontal one. We can either put it on the top or on the bottom. So therefore, this case will have um, four, four ways to assign the groups. And then oh, I'm running a little bit out of room here. But our third case, this will involve um, two horizontal ones. And then the thing about two horizontal, notice that they can't both be on the same row because there's only three squares there. So it'd be impossible to fit two groups there. So one's on the top and one's on the bottom. And then for the top one, you can either have it in like the left position. So like either this, uh, either this position or you can have it in the right position, like that position. So you have that choice for both the top and the bottom. So that gives you um, exactly four ways again. So if we sum up all of these way, um, all these cases, we get a total number um, of eleven ways of arranging all the groups. And then, like I said before, each group has twenty four um, ways, or like twenty four colorings, because each group can be um, any color. So the final answer we're looking for is 11 times 24, which is 264. And that represents the total number of colorings that we can use, which is E. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's... Hi everybody, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.